My name is Ronnie Decker and I am a registered nurse and this is Nursing Analysis. To begin today's video, we must understand that visualization and identification are the key components of education and being able to relate to the information. We need both an empty mind and canvas so we can create and simplify the information from this lesson to be able to permanently store it in our minds. Today, we will discuss the basic structure of the heart. The heart has four chambers and is about the size of a closed fist. If you were to open and close that fist repeatedly, you would recreate the contraction and relaxation phases of the heart. To locate the position of the heart, we would direct our attention to the middle of the thorax and the mediastinal space. The right and left pleural cavities are separated by this space. Let's talk about the protection of the heart. The heart is enclosed by a protective sac called the pericardium. This sac is made up of two layers. The outermost layer is a tough fibrous layer, and the inner layer, or serous layer, is further divided into two layers. The outer parietal layer that connects to the fibrous layer, and the inner visceral layer that is attached directly to the heart. It is important to note that in between the parietal layer and the visceral layer, there is a space called the pericardial cavity. There's about 10 to 15 milliliters of fluid in this space. This fluid lubricates the space and prevents friction between the layers during contraction of the heart. Now we will discuss the layers of the heart. The heart is also made up of three distinct layers. The epicardium, the myocardium, and the endocardium. The epicardium is the outermost layer of the heart and is composed of loose connective tissue that includes elastic fibers and adipose or fat tissue. The myocardium is the middle layer of the heart and is made up of involuntary striated muscle tissue. The innermost layer of the heart is called the endocardium and is made up of loose connective and epithelial tissues. Moving along to the chambers of the heart. The heart can be divided into four chambers, the right and left atria and the right and left ventricles. The atria sit on top of the ventricles. The heart is divided vertically by a wall called the septum. The atria are divided by the interatrial septum and the ventricles are divided by the intraventricular septum. Each of the chambers will vary in the amount of thickness they obtain. The atrial walls will be thinner than the ventricular walls. The left ventricle accounts for the thickest chamber and is two to three times thicker than the right ventricle. This mass of thickness is necessary to produce the force needed to pump the blood in the systemic circulation. The valves. Heart valves, just like any other structure with controlled directed movement, are the entrance and exit points within the chambers of the heart that control forward movement of the blood. Considering that contraction is not continuous event, there must be a way to give time for the collection of the blood in the chambers. Enter the valves. Blood collection is achieved when the valves are in a closed position. The way to pass blood from the atria into the ventricles and from the ventricles into the body systems is for these valves to be open. There are four major valves in the heart. Two atrioventricular valves and two semilunar valves. The valves are named for their shape and direction. The atrioventricular valves are called the tricuspid valve, meaning three flaps or cusp, and the bicuspid valve, meaning two flaps or cusp. This valve is also known as the mitral valve. The semilunar valves, both aortic and pulmonic, are named for their shape and because where they direct the blood in relation to the body. Aortic meaning to the aorta and pulmonic meaning to the lungs. Let's start on the right side from the right atrium to the right ventricle. The valve that separates these two chambers is the tricuspid valve. 
The right ventricle has its own valve that connects it to the pulmonary artery. This is the pulmonic valve. And as you were, probably were able to guess, this valve allows blood to be sent to the lungs. Moving to the left side of the heart. The left atrium is separated from the left ventricle by the bicuspid or mitral valve. The left ventricle also has its own valve known as the aortic valve. And again, you might have guessed, this valve allows blood to be directed into the aorta and out to the body systems. Now, you may be wondering what keeps these valves going in one direction. The atrioventricular valves are attached to thin strands of fibrous tissue called chordae tendinae. These strands are anchored in the papillary muscles of the ventricles. The semilunar valves do not have connectors and must rely on the pressure of the blood to keep the direction consistent. Blood vessels to and from the heart, the veins. Except for in pulmonary circulation, veins bring deoxygenated blood to the right atrium by way of the superior, meaning above, and inferior, meaning below, vena cava. These veins are named for the part of the body they collect blood from. The superior vena cava collects from the upper half of the body and the inferior vena cava collects from the lower half of the body. The upper and lower halves are denoted by the diaphragm. In pulmonary circulation, the lungs deliver oxygen-rich blood back to the left atrium of the heart by way of pulmonary veins. The arteries. The arteries in the heart, except in pulmonary circulation, take blood from the heart and direct it to the lungs for reoxygenation and to the body with oxygen-rich blood that has already returned from the lungs. Blood travels through the pulmonary artery and is routed to the lungs and then returned to the heart. Upon return to the heart, the oxygenated blood is then pumped out to the body through the biggest artery in the body, the aorta. It is important to note that the aorta is divided into two portions, the ascending and descending aorta. The ascending aorta, which delivers blood to the upper half of the body, then divides into three separate smaller arteries called the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. The brachiocephalic artery further divides into the right common carotid and the right subclavian arteries. The descending aorta delivers blood to the lower half of the body. The descending aorta has six paired branches, which will be discussed further in future lessons. Now let's review. So before we conclude this presentation, let's do a quick review. We have been serious enough, now let's have a little fun. The heart is the size of a fist in the center of the chest. To the left, two-thirds of it rests. Separating the right and left pleural cavity, going with and against the force of gravity, protected by a sac from front to back. Fibrous is first if you must rehearse. Serious is next, what else can we expect? Parietal and visceral split down the middle with lubricating fluid just a little. Back to the heart, just to be fair, so we can continue to break down its layers. Epi myo endo. Now we can continue. Chamber one at sight is located just to the right. Trying its cusp is what we must do if we plan to continue into chamber two. The right ventricle begins where the atrium ends, past the cords where they suspend. Now direct your attention to the other side where the left atrium loves to reside. We buy its cusp as we head down to the largest chamber wall ever to be found. Ventricular chambers have valves of their own, pulmonic and aortic direct to their zones. Straight down the middle, the septum is found to control the movement of the chambers around. Thank you for taking the time to learn with nursing analysis. Please like and subscribe to enable the production of future videos and educational content.